fun. It's so easy here. And Pilates and food nutrition. So I thought I'd put together a little video for you with regards to that. So one of the important things, as well as eating healthy, is really to consider your blood sugar levels. So in the triangle of health that we work with in the functional kinesiology, um, really kind of what you put into your mouth, uh, not just in terms of your the kind of sweet things, because at the end of the day, when you take food into your mouth and then that whole digestion process breaks it down, the body breaks it down into energy so that it can either store it um, if it can't use that energy up or to fuel the muscles and just that whole metabolism and cellular process. So why is that important to think about in terms of Pilates and movement and exercise? Well, what I find really fascinating is that actually when it comes to muscles, let's take, for example, our lower abdominal muscles, um, those are actually connected and key into your um, glute, bum muscles. Um, and so one of the things, so glute max uh, to be specific, and um, so we can test those in functional kinesiology and also in terms of your abdominals. So whether that's your transverse abdominals, um, obliques, um, and kind of rectus abdominals, which is your six pack. So those abdominal muscles actually key into your um, small intestines, organs. So why is this important to know that there is a relation? So when you're coming to train or you're like, oh, I'm getting that excess uh, build up in my tummy or you're going for a workout and it is a case of, you know, I wanna kind of like strengthen through my glutes or my bum muscles, but they don't seem to be kind of like working effectively or firing effectively. Um, there could be a number of reasons. So if you're quite sedentary and then you're used to sitting on your bottom and then you get up and go to do your exercise class, then just that sitting compression activity has an impact on the tissue. So that whole neurological, you go to do the movement um, and that neural pathway connection um, can be affected in terms of the body's ability to be able to send messages through the system. So again, if you don't use it, you lose it, but also nutritionally, if you're, you have challenges with your digestive system, bloating um, or constipation, uh, slow motility through the gut, or even if you're eating healthy foods that actually your body is intolerant to in some way, shape or form, or it hasn't got the capacity because there's too many other stresses going on, then this is gonna have an effect on your that whole neural pathway and your ability to be able to effectively work those muscles. They can be either um, unlocking when we test them, which means that think of it as an electrical circuit. So is my body able to kind of like sustain and kind of actively work? or if it keeps switching off because of a system overload, the body will then go, oh, I'll go and use something else. So whether it's neck muscles or maybe it's higher up in the hip that the body's trying to work to compensate. So it will start to create imbalances in, in how your body works. So therefore, when you're eating and the different types of foods that you eat, it's important to know that they're nourishing. So when it comes to muscle testing and kinesiology and looking at the different foods, then foods can either be biogenic, in which case they're nourishing for the body, or they can be biostatic. Biostatic foods are more of fillers, so they're not necessarily gonna nourish and support the body. Or you then you get those foods that are bioacidic. So those are the ones that if you tend to eat them, that they cause a reaction and that instigates the kind of fight or flight and that stress response through your system. Or it could be that actually the body finds that harder to process. Um, so then that makes the whole digestive system a bit more sluggish and affects the motility 
and stress is also something that affects the digestive system as well. You can also put into that equation um, hormones. So if like me, you've um, in the perimenopause and that happens from, um, perimenopause can start at 35 years um, and then you don't necessarily hit that my periods are starting to stop and change and could be 50s unless you happen to come into early menopause. Um, and one of the things that I found, um, particularly in my late 40s, so over the last couple of years, is that uh, foods that I seem to eat, I can feel more of a reaction, almost like an inflammatory response, or I seem to have more allergies to things. So in the winter, maybe it's the fur or tree pollen, and that is a symptom. So kind of like that runny nose or streamy eyes or um, uh, throat. So for me, my throat is a point if I'm stressed or overtired or work loads, then it's actually my throat. I can lose my voice and I have a history of that. Or it can just feel kind of cocky would be my description. So what I've noticed is actually there are certain foods that have higher histamine levels. So when you're going through that hormone roller coaster um, of estrogen, progesterone, and the balances of it changing, then actually that has an impact on histamine. And depending on whether you're eating food, so fruits, citrus fruits can actually be high in histamine. Um, and then that has an impact. So it's not just kind of what you eat, what you're eating, it's also kind of when you're eating them. So have a look or have a sense and see. So next time you're um, preparing your breakfast to eat before uh, you go out, or if like me, it's like when I'm working, I find it really difficult to eat breakfast. So I kind of prepare myself a little bit of a smoothie. So I am a bit of a sweet tooth. So I do like um, some fruit in there. But if I'm having my fruit, um, a banana or an apple, or I put that and raisins or oats, if you're slightly intolerant to oats, then mix that with, uh, even if you have two fruits, ideally one piece of fruit is better, but then we wanna mix that with some protein, some carbohydrates so that it's much more balanced and easier for your system. So we're always looking at how can we get that proteins, fats, carbohydrates balance in every meal to support us, even when you're snacking. So that's really important. And that's something that uh, I've written about. And I have a, a proteins, fats, carbohydrates sheets um, that I give out to clients when we're looking or discussing giving that um, to create a foundation, a firm foundation when your blood sugars are balanced, then it helps with energy, it helps with that whole blood circulation, and actually you have a much more stable base from which to operate from for the body metabolism, um, sleep, mood, it all has an impact on how you feel, what you're more likely to then put into your body. And also really interestingly, um, lack of eating. So that plays with our digestive hormones as well. And also the, the blood sugar levels And our body then goes, oh, we're not sure when we're going to eat. Let's store that uh, so that we've got that energy in support for later on. It doesn't necessarily mean that it goes to that area. So eating consistently and start to discover or just notice when I've eaten that thing, um, how do I feel or what makes me want to eat that? So often our bodies are really clever at going, I kind of need something savory or I need something uh, salty. So that's your body's signaling system going, I need this kind of mineral. Or if you're like, oh, I've eaten that. And then within about 20 minutes or so, having eaten it, you're like, oh, it feels uncomfortable in the digestion. Or you may get some... Um, reaction and symptoms in the back so aches or pains so you may not it might be absolutely fine but uh, my challenge and my mission for you if you choose to accept it is just notice um, 
what ha are there any physiological reactions when you're eating your foods how do you feel when you're eating your food so do you take time to savor and enjoy them um, or are you on the go when you're eating them um, these all have an impact and then when it comes to exercising Often, if you're exercising or doing sessions after work in that six o'clock time, it's like, do I have a snack? Don't I have a snack? And what are our different options? Because we want to make sure that if you're eating, ideally, if you're going to have just a snack, then kind of 45 minutes is probably a good time. And particularly hydrating really helps before doing a physical activity. So we're actually thinking about food to help prepare us so that we can get the most out of our physical activity. But if you eat too close to your physical activity, then actually your body's focusing on digestion or is it that you want to focus on doing a physical activity and then burning that energy? So your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system can do one or the other, either burn the energy, create more energy or digest. So it's allowing yourself to have the time, uh, thinking about those low glycemic, low glycemic index foods that have that slow release quality. And really, if you're too carby, then that can also create an imbalance in the blood sugars. And having excess of um, more the root vegetables and the starchy carbs can also have an impact. Um, harder to process or digest. Uh, for me, I know it's potatoes so um, and potato starch. So have a look and just notice when you next prepare your foods, um, what is the balance of vegetables and of those he healthy vegetables, or if you're already eating healthily, um, is there a reaction? How does your body feel after, after having them? And if you're like, well, I think I'm fine, I really don't know, then that's fine. Or if you want to find out, then again, that's where food testing, um, I can do that as well as balancing the body and seeing if there is any intolerances um, so that then you can give the body a better opportunity to be able to um, steer away from those and allow everything to regain its homeostasis and balance because the body does have its own healing opportunities. Sometimes we just need to clear the decks and clear the space to allow it to process or give it the help and support that it needs.